Hi guys, welcome back to another tutorial. I hope you're all doing well. So what I'm going to show you today is how you can set up custom printers in Prusa Slicer. So if you don't know about Prusa Slicer, it's a piece of slicing software that's dedicated to Prusa 3D printers, or at least from the initial install. But what you can actually do is set up your own custom printers on there, and you can use it just like you normally would with the Prusa. So I'm going to run you through how to do that. I'm also going to provide you with my templates as well, and I'll show you a little demo of it working at the end of the video. So let's take a look. So obviously this is the workspace in Prusa Slicer, and this is what you'd usually see. This is the build plate of the Prusa Mark III. But if you notice here on the right, I can click on printer, and I can go and select that to be the Creality CR10S, because I've set that up. So let's click on the CR10S. And you can see what happens there, my bed size has increased and I've got a different looking kind of build plate here. So what I'm going to do is show you how you can go through this and set this up yourself and kind of give you a, uh, a starting point as to how you can go and set these machines up. Each printer is very different and it's going to require a lot of tweaking. I've built up this CR10S profile probably over the last three or four months and only now am I really quite happy with it. I'm going to provide you with those files. If you want to just take it and use it, you can do that. But if you've got other printers as well, you can do go through this process yourself and hopefully you know, achieve some good results. So in order to set this up, what you've got to do is go up to Configuration and Configuration Wizard. And this is basically where you can set up everything for your printer. Now, it's got a bunch of different settings on you. And you'll see on the right we've got the Prusa, other vendors, custom printer. So we're just going to click on custom printer. And that's going to take us straight to this tab. And we're going to define a custom printer profile. So we're going to hit OK. And we can give that printer a name. So I'm just going to call this one tutorial for the sake of this video. So what we do then is click next. Now it's going to ask you which type of firmware do we use. So we're going to click the drop down and you're going to have to know what type of firmware your printer does use. Now the CR10S uses Marlin, so we're going to go and select that. Then we're going to hit next. Now this is another important part. You need to specify your bed shape and size. You should know this based on the dimensions of your machine. It also depends on your actual build plate, right? your printing surface. With mine, for example, the CR10S heat, heated plate is actually 30 or 300mm by 300mm, but my printable area is less because I bought a square tile for better adhesion and I scuffed up the surface. So what I'm going to do here is change this. In my case it's going to be 290 by 290 So what you can also do is notice that you can load in a texture as well. If you want to load in a texture, all it does basically is give you that surface image so remember on the Prusa one we saw that we could see the kind of build plate and it looked really familiar if you want to load in a texture for the CR10S which you can get on their website you can do that but we're not going to bother with that we're just going to hit next again this is where you set up your nozzle diameter and your filament diameter quite straightforward stuff Make sure you get this correct or you're going to have problems when you print. Extrude temps, again, you can set this depending on which type of material you're using. I tend to have a specific printer setup for each material because I adjust uh, retraction settings and all that kind of stuff. So for this one, I'm just going to go with uh, extrusion temp of 215 for PLA. I'm just going to set a bed temp of 70, which I like to use for the CR10S. So I'm going to hit next. Uh, it's going to ask you, do you want to use a bunch of filament profiles? This is up to you. You can select them. You can deselect them all. I'm just going to leave this as it is for now. And usually I def define my own filament profiles anyway, so it's not that important. So I'm just going to hit next. Automatic updates. Yeah, this is just standard stuff. You want to hit next. Next again. And keep view mode as expert mode for now. We're going to hit finish. And what you'll end up with is something like this. You'll see it load into a new kind of uh, workspace with your brand new build plate on the screen. Now from here, if you look on the menu on the right where it says printer, if you click the drop down, you can now see I've got that additional printer set up in here. Or in this case, it's just called tutorial. But depending on which printer you decided to set up, you'll see it there. So now we can just swap between any of these. So if I go back to the Prusa and click, You'll see we've got that uh, build plate there with the texture on it, like I mentioned before. And we can just easily switch back to tutorial. What we want to do now is focus on the print settings up in the top left. So if we go to printer settings, which is the fourth tab across, this is where you really need to define your machine 
and your machine limits. So what I like to do with this is for a starting point I like to use the default Prusa profile. So if you've got a Prusa profile set up in here already, take a look at these values for that because the Prusa is a relatively, well it's a very stable machine, it doesn't print incredibly fast and you know generally it's known to be very good in its performance. So you can use this as a good starting point. You know, all these numbers aren't going to work perfectly because as I said at the start of the video, each printer is different, they have different characteristics, and they require different settings and different optimization. And there's no guarantee that my settings for the CR10S will work for your machine. It, they're going to be slightly different. Go through all these settings, the extruder, um, G-code, and check to see what those values are and as a guide you can use the Prusa profile. In some cases your printer will come with its own slicer. So if I load this up here, Creality have their own slicer called Creality Slicer and this came with the printer when I bought it. But if you notice on the left here you can see a lot of the settings are there. So if we go to the advanced tab in this case you can see we've got speed settings, retraction settings and these are default for this slicer for that particular machine. So you can use these as a guide. So if we go back to Prusa Slicer, come to Print Settings and we go to Speed, you can see a lot of these are similar, right? So we've got Speed for Print Moves. And if we go back here, you can see our travel speed here is 80, 80 millimeters a second. We've got um, top bottom speed, outer shell speed. All these are tweakable. But if we go back to Prusa Slicer, you get the same parameters here. So you, you can try and match them up, but as I said, as a general rule of thumb, you can use the Prusa as a starting point and just give it a go, you know, try and print. This is where you will really learn about your machine. This is kind of where I really got stuck in as well to the expert settings on here because, you know, when you initially try the Prusa profile, it's not going to work perfectly, you're going to have to tweak it. And that's where really my predefined setup might help you out as a starting point as opposed to starting from scratch. But if you've, if you've set up a new printer, you will need to start from scratch. It can be quite frustrating at times, but once you nail those settings, it's, it really is a dream to use. It's super easy. Again, in regard to filament settings, this is all still shared with your other machine. So if, if you go to the filament tab, click that, any other filaments that you've set up previously will just be in here. You can select it and you're good to go. The main things you're going to want to tweak are your print settings in throughout all these tabs and your printer settings in the final tab. And just remember, you know, these are simple things. You've got your layers and perimeters, your layer height. You want to define that. You want to define your maximum layer height. So on the print settings, if we click this drop down here, you can see in my little setup, I've got these different settings. So I've got a specific setting for PLA and PETG. And if we go into the PLA, you can see my first layer height is 0.18 millimeters. I find this works best because PLA on a glass or mirror bed, you have to really squash it down, so you want that first layer height to be quite low. Whereas with PETG, so if I switch over to that, my first layer height is 0.3 mil, which is slightly higher. PETG is quite tricky to print on the CR10S, if I'm honest. I think it's mostly to do with the inconsistent heat bed temperature, but uh, I'm planning to upgrade that soon and I might make a video about that and show you how you can go about that. But uh, PTG likes to be kind of laid down as opposed to squashed down, so you want a slightly higher first layer height. What I want to focus on now is how you can export your settings for use in the future. So say for example like me, you've got a bunch of different printers in here and you're really happy with your setup and you want to save those for use on another machine or just a backup in future in case you have any problems with your computer. So what you can do is if you go up to File, Export, Export Config Bundle, what you can do is give this a name. You can just save that and, and it's a .ini file. And what that allows you to do is just directly import your settings back in. So if we were to do a fresh install now and I wanted to import my settings back in, I can just go to File, Import, Import Config Bundle. I can go to wherever it's saved. In this case, I've got printer profiles, the hardware guy. I can click open. 18 presets successfully imported. If I go to my printer, you can see them all in there. So I'm going to put this file up on my website for you. I'll leave a link below. So if you want to go and grab them and have a go at setting up your CR10S 
um, you can do that. And I've actually got in here as well. So if I go to uh, printer settings, custom G code, I've got custom starting G code that does a nozzle wipe and it does a purge. So just like the Prusa does, before a print, it'll do a huge purge, make sure it's cleared the nozzle, and then start the print. And I find that really, really handy. So I'm going to put those files up for you, as I said. You can download them from the description below. And have a go. Remember, all you've got to do, file, import, import config bundle, select that file, click open, and you'll have all my settings in here to play around with. One other thing I want to emphasize just before I close off the video is that each printer is different, right? Don't get sort of frustrated or put off if your machine isn't printed as well right off the bat, even with my settings. 3D printing and CNC machines in general are very stubborn at times. They require precise setup and a lot of TLC, to be honest, in order to keep them working properly. So it's important that you learn and understand the machine and go into all these settings and tweaking things is how you're going to do that. So I really encourage you to start from scratch if you can, just so you can learn about the machine. Remember, use the Prusa one as a template. Make some changes for your machine. Make sure you get the setup correct and have a go. Let me know how you get along in the comments below. So as I said before, my G-code does a purge at the start of a print and this is what you can see here. Just does this huge purge then comes back to the home position and just begins the print. I also like to slow the first layer speed down to 50%. I find this really helps with adhesion, especially on these glass or mirror beds. Remember, if you're into 3D printing and you want to start designing your own CAD models, I've got an awesome beginner's course on my website called Fusion 360 for Beginners. If you want to take a look at that, I leave a link in the description below. I'd love to have more of you on board. I've got a lot of signups now already and people seem to be enjoying it. So if you really want to get into CAD and you want to bring your designs into the real world, please take a look at it. I'm sure you'll enjoy it.